Today we are working on the good old Sea Dew Sweetster 96 model, doing the spring maintenance on it because this coming weekend is Memorial Weekend, and I think this is the latest I've ever got things done on the boat and getting it ready to go. The main thing is to change the pump oil on the jet dries. Do that every year because if you're familiar with Sea Dews, they use a needle bearing assembly that runs in gear oil as opposed to like sealed ball bearings. Change that oil will grease up the drive shaft. Technically you can change the oil in the pump without pulling the pump but the drive shaft in that goes in the impeller you can't grease it unless you take the pump off. You can grease the other end that goes in the PTO because it has a grease fitting down in there. But the other end does not. So we'll pull the pumps off, grease everything, and refill it with oil. Now if you watched my other video, which I'll put a link down in the description, about the drive shaft seals, I do have the older style seals that I think do a better job of keeping air from getting in the pump. And the way they're set up when you pull the pump out, the drive shaft will pull, you can pull it right out of the PTO, no problem. If you have the carbon ring style seal, the drive shaft will stay in the motor because it's got a clip that holds it in place. So you can just pull the pump off, grease the splines on the uh, impeller in and put it right back together. If you do want to take the drive shaft completely out on the carbon seal style, before you take the pump off, where this piece is right here, you'll have a stainless steel ring. You'll need to push it back toward the accordion hose. And then underneath it, there is a clip that you will take off, and that will release that from the shaft. Then the drive shaft can come completely out. Okay, the first thing we're going to do on this is the, since this is the jet boat, it does have the reverse buckets on it. There's a bolt here, 10 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter head on the bolt. We'll take that out. That will release it from the control rod. And that's got the bucket released. You can flip it up. Next, we'll take off this nut here for the steering arm. I think it is, it's 11 millimeter. Okay, that's got the steering nozzle loose. There's a couple of washers on this and there is a little plastic bushing right there. So make sure you don't lose it. The bucket, the buckets have a lock that unlocks when you, when the rod comes out to put it in gear. All right there, it's locked. You need to reach up. See, that disengages that latch. That lets you move that around. Now we have four bolts. Two on top, two on the bottom that take the pump. Or takes the whole steering nozzle loose. And there are 13. Okay, once those four are out, the whole steering nozzle and reverse bucket comes out leaving you with just the pump. And that's held on with four nuts that are 17 millimeter. Take those off and we should be able to slide the pump out. And the nuts are removed. And the pump, pull it straight out and off. And the drive shaft stayed inside. Like I was saying, if you can release it, if you have the carbon style, otherwise, just grab the drive shaft and pull it out too. And once you get your drive shaft out, inspect your splines really good to make sure they're not wearing through. This has some wear. I don't know if you can see it, but on that edge there, it's starting to wear some. But this boat's old. And that's the PTO in there. The impeller end looks good. See the little rubber deal on the end? You'll have one of those on each end. The other one stayed in the PTO. We just need to make sure it's still in position when it slides it back in. And the one in the impeller came out. And see these O-rings here? I'm running a... These are Scatrack Swirl impellers. And they had a little rubber cone to start with that fit up against here, but... Oh, probably about five, ten years after I bought them, the little rubber piece disintegrated. So I just stuck those O-rings in there. 
to uh, give it a little bit of a seal. Everything was still greasy, so they're evidently working. But yours will probably have a little cone there of some kind. On this end, this is the original drive shaft that was set up for the carbon seal. This little groove here, which I have, this little groove here, which I have filled up with JB weld. That just helps the seal slide over a little bit easier. But your bearing rides in here and your seals ride here and here. But you can use the same drive shaft. You don't have to get a different drive shaft to change to the older style seals. All right, let's uh, get the pump over the workbench, get it draining. To drain the oil out, we need to take this cone off the back, which has got three screws. They're eight millimeter head. We'll pull those out and then we'll pry that cone off over the drain panel and let the oil go out. It's got a pipe fitting right here to fill it back up with. Then we got the handy drain pan here. Set this on there and I usually just stick the Allen wrench in there and I can pull that off. That lets that gear oil drain out. That stuff actually looks really good this year. Normally the stuff is black when it comes out. And that's why I go to change it every year. This year it still looked pretty much like gear oil. But the kids have grown now and we don't spend as much time tubing and skiing is just a lot of me and the wife cruising around, so it's probably not near as hard on it. And you have an O-ring on this cone here. I mean, they suggest you change it every year or every time the deal's off, but I usually just inspect it and make sure it looks good, make sure it fits in there tight. I think I put, in the last 20 years, I might have put one new O-ring in it. And you'll know if the O-ring's going bad because you'll have some water in your oil there. Now what this does, so in a jet pump, in like my Kawasaki, my X2s and the Yamaha, they will use a couple of bearings like this, just a standard ball bearing. The impeller shaft will go through the center and these will be mounted up in the pump housing and the pump thrust kind of side loads the bearing, which is not ideal, but it works. Okay, it side loads, it pushes the boat along. And since it's a sealed ball bearing, there's no oil to change. Now, sea dews do it totally different. Now, I'm not gonna pull this apart because you gotta pull the impeller off. But on the other side of this little flange is a flat plate needle bearing. So when that impeller is shooting the water out back, it's pulling this forward and that little needle bearing is holding the, is handling the load of the thrust, pushing the boat along. And then there's another needle bearing that goes around the outside. And if you ever have trouble with the seal on the other end behind the impeller, you'll have to take all this apart. But we're not doing that now because it just, I don't ever, haven't had much trouble, but you can put this in a vise, you can unscrew the impeller from the other end and press all that out. But that's for a different video. But that's how the sea dews work, and that's why you change the oil, because that's all bathed in oil. And sea dew recommends, they've got their own special little bottles of oil that are 100% PAO, polyolefin, synthetic oil. Uh, you can buy that. The last 20 years, I've just used synthetic. I mean, it's, it's in the the sea dew stuff is a synthetic gear oil. I've used 7590, Mobile One, Valvoline, whatever I've had left over from other projects. Uh, just as long as it's synthetic gear oil, work just fine. Especially if you change it every year. Because it doesn't hold much. Like a quart of gear oil will last you many years. 
Okay, I checked the O-ring. I popped that back in there. It was a nice tight fit. We'll put a little blue Loctite on the screws, put those back in and tighten them down. And then we'll be ready to refill the pump. Got the blue Loctite. Just a little bit. It's a plastic cone, so you don't want to tighten it down too tight, but you also don't want to fall out. Next, we'll take out the filler plug. A little eighth inch pipe plug. Pull it out, then I usually try to get the pump. Pretty close to level. Then we start filling it up with gear oil. And this year, we're using Lucas. Shoot, that may have been what I put in last year, I don't remember. Maybe that's why it looks so good. Maybe Lucas is as good as they say it is. All right, you just start putting your oil in the hole. Fill it up till it runs out. Then let it set for a few minutes and do it again because it will keep working its way through the needle bearing. But you want to fill it up to where it's at the bottom of this hole. And then you can put the plug back in. I don't know if you can tell, but the oil is right there at the bottom of the hole. So we're ready to put the plug back in. And the plug's in. It's a tapered plug. So don't get too carried away with tightening. It's a little past snug. It's about flush with the outside. It seals up really good against that plastic. So I don't usually ever put any sealant on that. Haven't had any trouble. So the pump is done i forgot to mention a while ago when i was working on the first pump now when you got these off make sure to inspect this wear ring it's the blue piece here that surrounds the impeller if you get anything hung up inside there when you're running down the lake it can eat into this ring and you see there there's a few little scuffs here on this one Probably a stick or something out in there. That's not enough for me to want to change it. But if it's got any deep gouges, you need to pull the impeller and cut the ring out and press in a new one. And now's the time to do it. Fortunately, I don't need a new wear ring, so we're not going to be taking it out. But I'm betting there's some videos on how to do that out there. But do check it because... Deep gouges in that will cause cavitation just like uh, having a big air leak somewhere. And that will screw up your acceleration. Okay, before we put anything back together, let's take a look at this retro seal I've got in here. Now, number one, if you've got the your cover here, if you've got it stock, it will be about to here. You'll have to unscrew it from the motor and take it off. I cut it back so I can get to the grease fittings. You want to leave if you do cut it back you want to leave a little bit here to cover that flywheel the pto flywheel because if you do happen to get water in the hull at some point that thing will pick up the water and sling it right into your air filter or into your air box i know that from first-hand experience so if you cut it back leave it where it covers the pto All right now we've got the little grease boot there take it off and then i'll take this back clamp off here and we'll slide that off the fitting in the hull okay clamps loose let's pull it right out of there now these seal assemblies you see down in there it's got a needle bearing in the middle it's got a seal here seals grease in on that side and on the inside that faces back to your pump it's got a double seal or possibly a single seal if you've got an aftermarket one but the seals keep air from going down the drive shaft area and getting into your pump the needle bearing stabilizes it on the shaft so the seals work properly got a grease fitting there to keep the thing packed with grease and what I always like to check is to reach in there and make sure that needle bearing is nice and smooth and turns now, as long as you greased it before winter everything should be fine 
if you did not, these do get some water in them. And if you didn't grease it before you put it up, chances are your bearing may be rusted and need replaced. And usually I will grease these every trip, every two trips to the lake to drive out any moisture that gets in this assembly. And that is exactly why Sea-Doo got rid of these. Because while it seals better on the pump, it's more maintenance. And if you don't take care of that needle bearing, it can rust up. It will seize onto the drive shaft. Then this whole assembly will spin and it will rip out that plastic fitting in the hull. But I still, even though it's more work, it just performs so much better than the carbon seal that it's worth it to me so do what you want as far as that but that's how you fix this it looks good so i'll put it back in the hole we can just slide the drive shaft right through the middle and start putting stuff back together okay next up right here where the pump goes and fastens to the boat see this right here this is a seal seals the front of the wear ring to the adapter plate there on the hull. Because just like you don't want air coming down the drive shaft and going through your flow there, you don't want any air being sucked into the sides here because you'll end up in cavitation again. So we'll clean the rest of this off and put a new seal on there. I don't know if sea -Doo still makes them, but they did make a just a seal you just stuck up in there made out of neoprene. But what I use is just a roll of sticky backed foam weather stripping get it at any hardware store it's cheap and it works just uh, run it around just like that one was on the inside edge there and then overlap the end a little bit and that will smash down when you bolt the pump in and make a really nice tight airtight seal they have new foam seals in place so i'm ready to stick the drive shaft back in there I'm going to take and put a little grease on the splines, which this end's not super critical because you can grease it through the Zerk on the PTO. The little rubber bumper, I checked, it is in the PTO. It is still stuck in there facing out, so it'll go right back in the hole when I put this in there. And basically just feed it up through your assembly. Turn it to where it engages the splines on the PTO and bottom it out. Now we'll put a smear of grease on the splines that go in the impeller. And do use marine grease. It is different than regular grease. It's got some additives to keep it from absorbing the water. I'll put some here on the impeller splines. Another thing to watch out for is this fitting right here at the top. It's got a little rubber seal. Just make sure it is sticking up above the surface of the rest of the pump. Make sure it's not cracked or anything because this is what seals uh, to the hole where your water comes through for your engine cooling. The pump puts out water. It comes up through the back here, out this through that hole there and onto the engine. So it's important that that makes a good seal, but I don't think I might have changed those once in the last 20 years. Just make sure it's in good shape and that it's poking up a little bit. Now we're ready to put the pump back on. Make sure the drive shaft goes in. I'm I have to reach up and turn the impeller slightly, try not to smash your fingers to get it engaged, and it'll go on in. I can put all the washers and the nuts on around the outside. Okay, so we'll put these on. They've all got a flat washer, a lock washer, and then the nut. It pumps bolted up there. All right, you go put on the steering nozzle and the reverse button. This is a bit of a handful of crap to make sure the steering rod goes through where it's supposed to. Now 
a little tiny bit of grease on that steering bushing. Put your washers and the nut back on like it came off. And last, put the bolt in for your reverse bucket. Now go up and make sure everything functions properly. Last, you need to go through and grease the seat. And since that's an enclosed space, you can usually feel when it's getting full, you'll start getting a little resistance on the grease gun. Call it good, and then you've got the fitting up here on your PTO. Give it a couple of squirts. And that's all there is to surfacing that. Now you're ready to go rip around the lake for a full season. Except for me. I got a twin engine. I got to do the other side now. But it's worth it. Well, I hope that helps somebody. I know these things have been around forever and there's lots of videos on there. But maybe somebody's just bought one of these. These know how to do it. Here you go. Thanks for watching.